Good evening. Jim Adkins here from Jim Adkins Kimple Karate Studios in Traverse City, Michigan. Um, tonight, I'm going to give you an introduction to 26 Move Self-Defense Systems. It's a system that I created. And, you know, when I say created, I want you guys to understand that at certain levels, when you create anything, you're really regurgitating information that you've already learned, right? <laughs> so while us old dudes understand that what we might be saying you probably heard we might think you've heard it a million times because we've said it a million times it's new to somebody else so when i say i've created this system i did i put it together i built it based on what i wanted it to be and, and my years of experience but really it comes from my teachers right so first things first you give credit to to your teachers first and foremost and what i'm about to tell you um is in no way meant to knock anything that I've learned or anybody that's taught me or even anybody that I haven't met or is out there doing other things. Understand that. This is not about, hey, I'm better than you and you're better. You're not better. That's not what this is about. This is about my journey, what I've put together, and what I want to share. Why am I sitting on my butt? Well, I tore my calf muscle <laughs> twice now. Um, I've got a student who's a doctor that recommended that I sit on my butt for this video because I can't seem to keep myself still. So I'll show you a picture of the calf muscle. Man, don't tear your calf muscle. It sucks. And I tell people it's not the age, it's the mileage. <laughs> so I'm going to sit down. I'm going to introduce this to you really quick, and then I'm going to come back next week. I'm going to be healed totally fine by next Wednesday, and we're going to move. We're going to move for you. Just show you some of the, the stuff inside the 26 Move Self Defense System. So, what is 26 Move Self Defense System? Well, let's start with what it's not. It is not a black belt program. I'm offering this online as a membership. Uh, you can sign up online. You buy the whole program. You get all of the videos. You get a, a private membership group. You get access to me. I will help you uh, through coaching online like this. It's a whole package, and it becomes a family. It's a network. It is a complete self-defense system. That's what it is. What it isn't is a black belt program. Let me repeat that because you cannot get a black belt online, a real one. You really can't. I don't care what anybody tells you. Um, you need an instructor for a real black belt. Can you buy a black belt? Yeah, I think they're like seven bucks or something somewhere. Go buy a black belt. Um, you can even stand in front of a teacher and pay 200 bucks in a black belt if you want, but not here, not with anybody that I know that's a reputable Kempo person. Wow, did I already get preachy? <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, I took some notes, so I'll try and stay uh, on track and I'll be really quick. It'll only be about 15 minutes. Okay. So hang with me if you want to learn something, if you want to know what it is, and then I'm up for some questions. Okay. Uh, compared to what is it compared to 26 moves is compared to every art. Well, let's do this. Uh, Kempo in Kempo, which is my background. One of my backgrounds, the main background in Kempo, everybody at a certain rank that I know of above at a certain higher rank, maybe even some of the lower ranks, think they know everything. <laughs> I've been there at least four or five times in my career. I know it all and I'm going to fix the system. I've been known to say it. <laughs> I've, I've uh, said it in public. And um, so what they do and they cut out the techniques in the system that they don't like, that, that, that I didn't like, excuse me, let me, let me talk about myself, that I didn't like. Um, you leave out the things that don't work for you, for me. I leave out the things that don't work for me. And I've done this a few times in my life. Ask my students who started with me a long time ago. They've got three different systems under their belt, IKKA, MCKKA, and the LTKKA. And through all of those systems, I have taken techniques and went, mm -hmm, this is not my favorite. Let's not do that one, right? Um, so... When that and you know NCKK students, I got a bunch. I think I totaled them like 1,027 different Kempo techniques at one time in my life. All variations of the same moves, right? Anyway, that's my background. So what did I do? Did I cut the system? Kind of. You can compare that to what what I've done. 26 moves has to come from Kempo. It has to. Why? Kempo is my background. So when you look at it and you go, well, that's just Kempo, but he cut some things out. Well, yeah, that's my background. That's what I do. I also have a background in jitsu and I also have a background in kung fu. 
Um, I've studied a lot of different arts. When I say studied, I've had the opportunity to get on the floor for more than a couple of weeks, a couple of months at a time, you know, three, four, five, six, eight months, which really isn't a lot of studying, but I have with Taekwondo, great Taekwondo people, um, uh, Tang Sudo people, Wadukai people, Shotokan people, really hard styles, bam, and some ter ter terrific people there. Uh, Aikido people, Shirinji Ruki people, um, uh, some of the Combato people in Arizona, right? Mm -hmm, that was fun. I marked that guy all up. Anyway, so I've got a lot of different, lots of different information. In my early years, where did this come from? Well, I started martial arts a long time ago for self-defense. Like a lot of people, I would assume, and a lot of people that I meet that come in the dojo, you st I started because I was being bullied. You know, my dad died when I was nine. I was pretty much all by myself in a family of, of seven kids. You know, I was one of the oldest. I kind of all by myself. And before seven, I was the oldest of four. And I found myself in front of a karate instructor who changed my life. And when I told him, he asked me why I was there. He said, why are you here? Are you studying? And I said, I want to beat people up. I was a little kid. And he didn't try to change my mind. But what he did was through his teachings taught me a better way a better decision-making skills. He didn't do that in front of me. He did it back here, okay? That's a real martial art. There's so much more to learn, but my whole background, my whole driving force was real self-defense. I want something to work. If I'm picked on, hit, bullied, whatever, okay? Kempo did it. I studied other things. The traditional systems were not right for me at the time because they didn't address the problem immediately. They get to it, and they get to it well but it not immediately. Kempo did it immediately. So I kept it. About 30 years ago, I, through my teachings, I got to teach the law enforcement through some of my students. And it verified some of the things that I knew about my Kempo at the time. It was incomplete, but it also worked parts of it. The concepts were solid. The theories were solid. The moves, the basics, solid. Some of the fancier put-together conversations of motion were not necessarily practical enough to work in a changing environment on the street. Did you follow me? This is where my system comes from. Get in front of law enforcement and... They want to know, no, you know, I don't have time to dance and fly, and I, I don't have time to learn to kick way up there. Um, what can I do right now? So they even took it to a quicker degree for me. I wanted it immediately. They wanted it less than immediately. So we altered within the Kempo realm. Don't start knocking things because, hey, you're changing stuff. Of course I'm changing stuff. I'm making it better. I'm perpetuating the art, okay? Through my law enforcement people, I met the military and got to work directly with the military. I wasn't the only teacher. Don't think that. There were, I think on the base at the time, there were 70 of us at one time teaching martial arts to different aspects of the military. And when I finally got through, there was like maybe 15 of us. But through teaching them, what I discovered was still I needed to trim away some of the things I was teaching in a regular class develop directly for their their needs now so i became the why guy and and my how i start everything is tell me what you want to work against what's your main concern what what are the most practical or the realistic attacks that you're going to face not knowing their enemy completely or totally those things can be arbitrary but once you get a zone idea and this is part of the 26 moves when you start working in zones um, hand to hand combat, you know, we're talking foobar stuff here when the weapons are gone, um, when the long range weapons are gone, and it's hand to hand, the foobar stuff, we're talking zones. So, zones are going to be a major part of what you train when you do 26 moves. Um, we talk about the master's wheel and the circles that represent distant er different areas of zones and how you can justify or magnify what you know for multiple attackers. Sound like Kempo? Gee, I wonder why. Okay. About 20 years ago, remember that was 30 years ago when I started cutting the system. 20 years ago, Larry Tatum accepted me as his student. Larry and I sought him out. 
I, my teachers could no longer take me past where I needed. And they actually said, hey, go, please find somebody else. And I did. And I looked at three um, and really hoped that Larry would accept me. I went and stood on his floor for about four hours one day in Pasadena and let him beat the crap out of me, which was fun. And uh, we sat down at his desk and he accepted me as a student. 20 years ago, November, 21 years ago, November, this November. And um, changed my approach and ideas of Kempo again. Larry taught me things about Kempo I never knew. Not to the fault of my other teachers. It was just I wasn't ready to absorb them. You've all been there. Larry reintroduced and introduced new, new facets of Kempo that blew my mind. And I knew he would. That's why I sought him out. Uh, he's got a way of explaining things and moving that helps you understand. So my Kenpo now, everything I do in my dojo for the main martial art here is LTKKA, Larry Tatum's Kenpo. It's not my, well, it's my Kenpo too, because he, he shared it with me, it became mine. So our Kenpo, Larry Tatum's Kenpo is my Kenpo as well. That's what I teach on the floor. What's a complete martial art? A complete martial art is something you don't tell your new students. You try to, but they don't understand it. It's mind, body, and spirit. Right? If you sell your Kempo system based on I'm going to help fix your life in every aspect by teaching you goals and positive thinking and how to, how to critically think and how to manufacture and achieve every positive goal you want and, and eliminate the negative stuff, they're going to walk out. Why? They're probably on the floor for one thing. What is it? Self-defense. Can you do that with LTKKA Kempo? Yes. 100%. The techniques in the system that Larry teaches, that I teach on my floor, is uh, they're conversation starters, and they're great conversation starters, even when they don't work, quote unquote. If you've got a technique that is um, sophisticated in motion and lengthy in vocabulary, and somebody looks at it, a new adult, because I've got 80% more adults than I do kids on the floor. I love that. Well, I love the kids too, but, and they go, wait, you know, is, I would have already done this by now. And they get to the what if phase before they even learn anything, right? They're, they're right. Yeah, absolutely. That might happen. But how could you, would you, should you respond? And then what if, and then you bring in the concepts and you bring in the theories. So when 26 moves self-defense system, I can't ignore that. And it's there. Did I take out the sophisticated, lengthy, verbose motions of technique? Absolutely. 100%. Now, where it comes from? It comes from my Kempo. Uh, here's something funny. Uh, when I'm talking about LTKKA and I'm talking about my background and people look at me and I've heard them say this about other people and myself, oh, he's trying to move like Larry Tatum. Of course I'm trying to move like Larry Tatum. Who better to model than my teacher? The excellence that he has in his motion, I can put on, model, and make it mine. Every breath, every focused outcome, every intent, every <laughs> every noise that he makes. I want them. They're mine. That's why I went after them. So if I look like him, good. <laughs> okay. Excellent. That's what I'm going for. And you should too. But anyway, let's get off of there. Let's go back to 26 moves and see if I'm, see if I'm on track, right? Um I got that. I'm good there. Um, okay, I got hired on. Um, with the military, what happened was, and, the, and law enforcement and security guards, because all three of those were different. The military had a defined enemy most of the time. We had an outcome that was f final, right? Their, their um, end result was different than law enforcement. Do you follow me? Military. Special forces, people on the ground, people the FUBAR stuff that I was teaching them had a different end result for the most part. It was not hugging and kicking and kissing and, and, and licking and rolling around in the dirt. It was survival. And the 26 moves that I'm doing now comes from that. Everything that I put together for them is what I teach in the 26 moves. Okay? We call it. There's gun techniques, there's knife techniques, there's, there's a defensive and offensive pistol, defensive and offensive knife, defensive and offensive stick, multiple attackers, inside, outside, range, the master's wheel, 
and that's a good guess. That's a good um, first look at what I have in 26 moves. So no, but what it is, is that. That's where it comes from. Now, I boiled things down into threes. You'll hear me use the analogy of three for almost everything throughout the system. There are three personality types of people. In 26 moves, we're going to discover which of those three you are. I developed those through the military. There are four different military types. I'm not going to go into it with you now, but that comes from me. Okay? And I didn't create the four military types. I learned to recognize them for them, taught them to teach what they knew, the best of what they knew to each other based on those four, four types of people. We'll discover which of the three you are before we even go forward. Okay? That's important to know. I'll give you a hint. I'm not supposed to, but let's say this. Let's say in the system, I'm going to show you how to, let's not go so gory, break a rib. And I'm going to tell you exactly what rib. I'm going to show you the direction of the rib breaks for your most successful motion, how to use the elbow instead of the forearm to make it 100% successful all of the time. And I show you how to break that rib. Can you break a rib? Yes. If your heart says no because you're not that type of person, what I just taught you was almost a waste of time. Because if you think you're going to break a rib and you're not that type of person, you will not accidentally ever break a rib. You won't. You can't. Your subconscious will disallow it. Ask your martial arts instructor how important it is to have the mental backing behind your attitude and motion. If they don't know, buy them a book or have them sign up for my class. Is that arrogance? No. The difference between arrogance and confidence is the ability to back it up. In my system, I know the answers. <laughs> Here we go. Having fun with you guys. That's one of the things that we do in the 26 moves. We develop, the, we find out which of the three personality types you are, and we move your training based on that. Does it change what you learn? No. Does it change how you learn it and your results? Yes. Let's go back to results. Let's talk about the military and their final result. In the, in the law enforcement community, I could not take the same system and say, here you go. Why? There are lawyers. And there are people that like to try to sue our wonderful people in blue. It happens all the time. Now, I'm not blaming lawyers at all, because a good lawyer can be a good, in your corner can be a good defense, right? But uh, think about it. From the 1980s, as we were teaching the military, or not the military, excuse me, we were teaching law enforcement, they were getting in trouble for defending themselves. Ask them. The 1980s, they were kind of allowed to make contact. Not malicious contact, but kind of, somebody fighting you, they were allowed to defend themselves. It changed. Somebody sued somebody who sued somebody else, and the city had to pay, and the people were losing their livelihood. Now, don't get me wrong. There are bad cops out there, too. There are. There are wonderful, wonderful police officers and law enforcement. And of course, in every there's some jerks, right? Some people, little ones run it for everybody, but it, now they couldn't defend themselves. So we had to change things. And we, we, we started with a non-aggressive open stance, hands open, and their defensive tactics became more of a positioning and pushing move. Now we're using 26 moves here, teaching them. And it became the standard for Arizona throughout the nineties. Um, Mr. Hewitt, took it over and, and ran with it until they tried to change it again and started grappling everybody. And then he said, no, I ain't going to have no part of this. You guys are going to get yourself killed. I'm gone. And he walked. We'll talk about that later. So in 26 moves, you're going to get military finality and the law enforcement conclusions. Open-handed palms, aggressive defensive tactics, positioning. Always speaking, you look like you're Italian because you talk with your hands or you put your radio where you can use it. You blade yourself so that you're making sure your weapons are not compromised. These are aspects of our 26 moves. That's what it is. Now let's go to security personnel. Private security is different than public security. Our private security guards have a little more leeway depending on who they're protecting and what country they're in. So I had to change that for them. And we did. That is in 26 move self-defense systems. Our public security guards, bouncers and um, you know door standers and people that help keep the peace in a, in a 
in a, in a large environment. They had to be a little bit more controlling versus hitting. So we, we put some of the Chen Na from my Kung Fu background and my ninja background, the locks and holds of jujitsu. And I hate to throw that word out because of the moniker, the demeanor that people have these days with jujitsu and MMA. But really, it's a mixed martial art. It always has been. Bruce Lee was my first you know, influence. Here we go. So that is in 26 moves. Are you catching it? I'm throwing a whole lot of it at you. Okay. I hope I didn't take up a lot of your time. I know it's 20 minutes here. We're past. Um, 26 moves is the best of what I know. The ninja, the kung fu, and the kempo. But it's not a black belt program. Will you get the same amount of spirituality from 26 moves? Only if you're looking for it and you spend time with me other than the physical stuff. I can't separate my teachings, right? But it's not what it's about. When you learn a real martial art, and 26 moves is definitely a real martial art geared towards self-defense, not sport. I was never interested in sport. It's not what I want. It's not about sport. There's a difference between fighting, sport fighting, sparring, and self-defense. There's a huge difference. If you don't know it, you don't know it. Learn it. If you want to, you don't have to you know, go do your sports stuff, whatever. Um, the mentality is totally different. 26 moves is about self-defense. And I'm not talking about your weekend self-defense seminar. No, any move can be considered self-defense. Any move. Self-defense moves boil down to three things. Okay. And I'm not going to tell you on here what they are. You can contact me and find out. I love you guys. That's what I'm doing. If you have some questions, it works better that way because no matter what I say, everybody hears something different. And because I talk at 90 miles an hour, sometimes you don't even hear what I say. I know that, and I'm not going to apologize for it. Okay. That's what 26 Moves kind of is. Trust me when I say this. It has taken me 26 years, <laughs> actually about 28 years, to put this together. It took me 10 years to even want to share it. I waited because my instructor had videotapes out there, and he still does. He's got an, an awesome app when you study Kempo. And again, let me repeat this. On the floor in my dojo, I teach LTKKA, Larry Tatum Kempo. It's Jim Adkins Kempo because he shared it with me, and now it's mine. And it's complete. It's awesome. And it has – it helps – bring people to the spirituality of martial arts, the self-discipline of martial arts, the physical aspects of martial arts. And if you don't know the difference between training and studying, I'm going to help you with that too. I've got a free ebook coming out that, that helps you explain my version, my view of the difference between training a martial art and studying a martial art. Both are necessary, but depending on your personality type, you will gravitate toward one or the other. LTKKA Kempo does that. Okay. And Jim Atkins Kempo is Larry Tatum's Kempo. It does it. The 26 moves, on the other hand, is straight to the point, no nonsense, self-defense. The reason I did it, people that came in the dojo of advanced ages, 40 and above, 90% of the adults in here were looking for an immediate answer, an immediate, realistic approach to protecting themselves. Do I love the jumping and kicking and flying around? When I was 16, I did. I could get my ass as high as a doorway. I loved all that stuff. Now, at 54, I know what a real fight is. I did back then too, but you messed around and goofed off and got yourself hurt um, several times, shot, stabbed. It just happens. <laughs> okay. Now though, we don't have the time to do that and you learn quickly when you're capable of the final result you're least likely to go there right away it's called maturity 26 moves is a mature system if you want more come back next week i'll share with you i'm gonna heal my leg i'm gonna get on the floor i'll show you some of the easy stuff um you'll learn what the analogy means and uh why I'm so adamant about it. All right, guys, 
I will see you in Massachusetts on the 25th, 26th. We're going to Steve Arsenal School. I get to go up there and teach and share the floor with um, Scott Southwell and Larry Tatum. And I, I can't remember who else was on the bill, but I, I'm very excited about coming up there and meeting you people. I've never been up there. And I can't wait to go to Boston and see some of the stuff too. So um, I love you guys. Talk to me. Oh, on your mark, get set.